Hiya, sleepyheads. So I decided to make a Totoro ornament inspired by Totoro, my neighbor Totoro. If you haven't seen the movie, you definitely should. Um, it is my first anime movie other that I saw when I was in first grade, which was around 1996 or 97. So a long time, so don't come for me. Um, but it was my favorite movie and I would watch it over and over again on VHS. So this is just a little like memento towards that because I haven't seen the movie in forever. I feel like I should watch it. Part of me feels a little outgrown for it, but it's still a classic and I love Studio Ghibli. So this is just a little cute little ornament idea. I don't know if I will actually print this or whatnot, but it was fun to make and I really like the, the drawing idea that I came up with. Just a little to two Totoros, some, a soot sprite, and a Christmas tree in the background. I just thought this would be fun since it's Christmas time and I'm getting in the mood for celebrations. But of course I start off with a base this time just so I know where to set everything down and I make the blocking out with mainly spheres. I use some cones obviously if it was more cone shaped like the tree. And then I am messing with the topography. I think it's topography. Don't come for me. I don't know if that's actually what it's called. That's what I'm calling it right now. But I mess around with like the vertices and all that stuff and just to see what fits and what works. Um, I had to experiment a little bit because it's still pretty new to me and I haven't watched a lot of tutorials on Nomad Scope, so I'm kind of learning as I go. Now growing up, uh, I guess I wouldn't have known this was anime per se. Uh, we used to have those scholastic book fairs and the first how to draw anime book I actually got from there, at least from what my memory serves me. I grew up, I actually still have them if you guys ever want to see them, maybe I'll post a picture of them. But I have like 20, maybe 15 anime books on how to draw anime because the internet wasn't like the internet it is now. Of course there were sites dedicated to that or learning how to draw, but not to the extent to where it was today, especially not in first to like fifth grade. Like I don't even know if I would have even thought about searching that. Maybe I did. I don't really remember. So I relied on books and reading the books and learning from that. So I got my first how to draw anime book from there and looking back it is very very elementary like probably great for my age but looking back it's like per the art's pretty bad it's kind of funny honestly but here I am blocking out the smaller Totoro I make the other the bigger Totoro disappear just so everything is centered so when I move the smaller one everything just kind of makes sense because when you do the symmetry on the left like out of the middle of everything it can kind of get a little bit messy so I just keep everything in the middle unless I have to move it just in case just not to mess anything up and then so sprites are easy just a circle or a sphere really because it's not flat it's three-dimensional and then adding another present in the background you know it's just to make it a little bit more balanced out and pretty looking and name all your objects because there are so many objects in here I would have definitely got confused on what things were and it just gets really annoying to tap around and all of that figuring out what is what and I think having a base was very like helpful and I think I should do bases more often just even if it's not part of the finished piece just to keep everything on like a similar plane and seeing where everything lies out at the end.
fixing up the little details and of course here comes my favorite part quote unquote coloring it in so I'm just choosing the base colors really I don't want to go with a lot of white just because the snow is gonna be white and I want things to stand out and look good I go with a brown gray for the big Totoro and then a like a cream color for the smaller Totoro just so it's not flat against the white snow and then just fixing everything up, you know, smoothing things out. The tree is a bit low poly, I feel like, but that's okay. I actually did upscale it so I could use the masking tool to create like snow that had fallen on the tree to make it a, like, a bit more three-dimensional or more, I don't know, just it looked good, so I did it. <laughs> Do I need more of a reason? I thought this looked good. I make the tree in general, like the green parts, a little bit unsymmetrical so it looks more natural it looks more like nature because you know in nature you can almost never find something that's symmetrical especially in plants even if they may look symmetrical from far away or from a distance you know if you look up close to something each side is not the same it's never gonna be that way in real life pretty much so this just gives it a little bit more mm, no I don't know what that means actually say I just said that but yeah, I go over with a masking tool and I mess around with it later and just m mush things, push things around. Because um, I noticed with the masking tool, if you extract and it's just on the like plus sign, if you know what I'm talking about, it's like floating above what you extracted it from. And if you don't want it floating, you have to like push it back down. So, And then I realized when I was making the presence, uh, the bows or like the ribbon around it, it kind of Next up is making the star for the tree. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with the radial tool, which is how I did this for the, um, and sorry for the horn, there's a train coming through. Um, but it's just a lot of fun to mess around with the radial tool or tools that I haven't really used just to like figure it out more and just play with it and learn from it. And these stars were meant to look like the little candies that, um, I forget her name, but from, um, spirited away where they give the little soot sprites down in the like charcoal area where they give them as food and dance around and they're like yummy meals but I make different colors of them so it kind of represents that in a way if you can like remember that part um and then I just mess around with the presets to see how it would look as a render image and it looks a little dark here so I apologize for that I didn't realize that when I was filming I tried to brighten it up I think a little bit but um just messing with the lighting and all that to make sure it looks good. So here's like pretty much the finished uh, render and all that. I love the glow of the different light colors on the tree. Honestly, it's, I love the holographic look of the reds and the blues or pinks and purples. I don't know, it just kind of stands out. I love complementary colors in shadow or like glistening form or I'm not sure refraction refraction reflection forms I don't know how else to put that and I'm just fixing everything up you know because like uh, you don't see certain things when you're making it sometimes you just are like yeah that looks good from that angle and then you do like a 3d revolution of your piece and you're like oh that's like not even on my where it's supposed to be it's totally floating when it shouldn't be and all that and sometimes just getting it in the right place can be a little bit difficult
So here is the final look of the rendered image. I didn't know what to call it an illustration, but I really like how it turned out. I think it's super cute and that is what I'm all about. Just cuteness in general. So let me know what you think and check out my other videos. I would appreciate that so much. Thanks for watching. Bye.